lives a quiet life for people who are shattered after years of mortal strife. A care home for the elderly where no one seems to care. But recently, a test bed for the Caithness self lift chair. <laughs> the patron and the matron, one a major, one a nurse, think old ladies are appalling, not men, they're even worse. They need helping, they need lifting, there isn't cash to spare. So they've swapped a girl called Tricia for the Caithness self lift chair. <laughs> the old folks at the Bower all like Tricia, she was nice. She'd listened to their stories, though she'd heard them once or twice. But now she's gone, the lounge is quiet, the inmates sit and stare, till suddenly a noise comes from the Caithness self lift chair. <laughs> Mrs. Mould is not what social services call sprightly. She just sat and watched Countdown and shouted at Richard Whiteley. <laughs> But suddenly she's flying in a shower of underwear, <laughs> propelled across the ceiling by the cake nest self lift chair. The others watch her progress as her mighty knickers snag on the sharp and dusted antlers of a taxidermied stag. <laughs> they exchange conspiring glances. Can they do it? Do they dare? For the bower bought a dozen of the cake nest self lift chair. They open all the windows, move the chairs across the floor. Apart from one which Mrs. Thomas jams against the door, each one sits and faces freedom and says a silent prayer. Lord, carry me away now on my faithless self-lift chair. <laughs> one by one the chairs spring into life and pensioners are hurled across the cliffs of Bexhill to return to the real world. Mrs. Roberts' shoot has opened. She's landed on the beach. She's joined by all the others. They enjoy a wine gum. Each. <laughs> they unfold their pack up zimmers and they turn to face the bower and they shout out, Son off, matron! in a voice of awesome power. <laughs> the inmates of the bower, free from care and chained from sheltered living by the Caithness self lift chair. <laughs>